Uh, one update on our team, I think you guys probably saw Andrew Jones went down in the uh, VCU game actually a couple times. Um, he has a fracture in his right wrist. Um, fortunately, it's, it's not one of those injuries where he should be out for a, an extended long period of time, but he's going to miss uh, you know, at least the, the, the next uh, few games here coming up that we have uh, before Christmas. And uh, they decided not to put him in a, in a cast, uh, which is good news. He actually can do a little bit of shooting, not three-point shooting, but closer to the basket. And um, uh, obviously it's a tough injury for us because he's a leading scorer and, and has just done a phenomenal job for us this year. Uh, but we're really hopeful and excited about getting him back as soon as we can. In the short term, you know, it's one of the reasons that you have a team with, with depth and why you bring guys in to, to step up and, and be part of something larger than themselves. So we're going to need everyone on our team, not just guards, but uh, everyone on our team to step on and step up and take a little more responsibility on. Um, the, now, when you have situations like this, the, uh, the principles that you focus on and talk about on a daily basis, whether they're cultural, offensive or defensive, those things take on even more meaning. Uh, because your margin for error is a little bit smaller without your leading score. You said uh, December. Is this something that's a three to four week thing? We don't have an exact timetable, Dustin. Uh, it's really good news that they didn't put it in a uh, in a cast. Uh, and again, literally yesterday, I mean, he's out out on the court shooting, and I said, I said, Andrew, just make sure you, you're not doing anything uh, that that the trainer doesn't want you to do. But uh, we're we're hopeful that uh, we can get him back and three, four weeks, something like that. But that's, that's not a set timetable that the, that the doctor's given us. He had an x-ray. Uh, they saw a hairline fracture. Uh, obviously, you know, we, we want to allow that to heal completely. Uh, he'll have another x-ray in time and uh, then, you know, be able to re return when that looks good and when he feels good. And this is right wrist, correct? Right wrist, okay. yep. Was it, was, it the, was it the second fall in Richmond, the one that was at the end of the game that I don't know for sure. I think it was the first fall. Okay. Um, I, that's just me guessing. You know, watching the tape, okay. the first fall was was really tough. There's a their basket support. Uh, it, it's it just seemed like it was a little bit closer mm -hmm. to to the to the baseline than than uh, than some other ones. And he ended up kind of awkwardly with his wrist on that. And uh, it was it was a lot of force uh, behind it. And if you remember, he got fouled on that play. And, uh, you know, we, you're allowed to sub for a guy that gets injured and, and, and sub a free throw shooter, but he, he really wanted to go in and stay in the game and, and shoot the free throws and continue playing for us. But then, as you mentioned, he fell again and kind of braced his fall. Um, so I'm not positive which one of those falls it was, but uh, if I had to guess, I'd say probably the first one. Who do you envision not just taking his, his spot in the starting lineup, but – you know, that guard rotation, you have a lot of guys fighting for minutes right now. How do you see that playing out? Well, this is one of the reasons why um, I believe in playing a lot of guys early in the year because uh, there's going to be situations where you, you're probably going to need them later in the year. Uh, so we have uh, five perimeter players, uh, with, you know, with Andrew being hurt. And you have Eric, Jace, and, and JY that have come off the bench, and they've all had some good moments. Eric obviously has by far the most experience of those guys, and he's had uh, you know by far the best you know season so far and played the most. Uh, but we're going to need all three of those guys, and I think all three of them are guys that can come in and contribute for us. Coach, I know you were at the Del Conte press conference. Um, what are your first impressions of him? I thought he did great. Uh, we actually met with him uh, as a, an athletic department coaching staff at 9 a.m prior to his press conference, so we got a chance to hear from him. Uh, you know, I, I, I did some re reading and, and, and did some, some learning of just his background and uh, the family that he comes from and, and that sort of thing last night. And it, it was, you know, it was great to hear from him, both in the, the coaching meeting, but also in the press conference about the things that he values. Uh, I thought, you know, his level of passion and, and willingness to show emotion and excitement also, sense of humor uh, are, are all things that are really, really exciting, uh, you know, for all of us as coaches and student athletes and, and people that are part of this program. He, he's a guy who 
who I know for a fact loves basketball, right? And, and Jamie would say the same thing at Fort Worth. Um, this seems like a massive hire for you and Karen. Would you, would you do you see it that way? Well, I think it's a I think it's a massive hire for Texas. Yeah. I, I think. First of all, Mike Perrin has done a phenomenal job uh, over the past you know, two years plus of stabilizing our department. Um, you know, he's really helped a lot of the athletics teams with projects like this one. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but I, I think everybody knew that you know, at some point there was gonna be a you know, long, long-term person that was brought in here. Um, and that's what the president decided to do with Chris. Um, I think I think he he made a home run hire. Um, you know, Jeremy Foley was the athletic director at Florida for 30 plus years. He's the the athletic administrator that I have more respect for than than, than anyone I've ever been around in terms of people I've worked with. Uh, he texted me on Saturday when the news came out, and he said, "Just so you know, you're getting a guy who's the absolute best, and he's got an unbelievable sense of humor and way about him as a person. You're really going to love being around him." You mentioned using this time off to work on shooting, free throws. Anything mm -hmm. you've tried over the years that really works on free throw shooters just in the practice gym? Free throws, uh, well, I, I think the most important thing is repetition, uh, but then trying to put some pressure on those reps. We came in here, I forget which day it was. Uh, I think it was the day uh, we were off the day after VCU, so it would have been Thursday. And the first thing we did was we went to the foul line. We were split up in two different teams, orange and gray. And uh, the losing team was going to have to run. And we did that for about 15 minutes. So we did that over and over and over again. So trying to, to build some type of pressure behind the free throws. But it's not the exact same as, you know, being on the line and pressure moments, uh, you know, whether it's at home or, you know, especially on the road when the crowd's trying to make you miss. I thought Mo. Uh, stepping up and making those two free throws at VCU was huge for us. And then Eric making three out of four down the stretch was really important in a close game. With uh, Andrew going to be out for a while, obviously, and do you expect or do you think that Dylan sort of maybe needs to take more of a burden on playmaking with Andrew out since he does so much on the offensive end? Well, yes. I mean, he's done a lot of playmaking for us so far. He's led our team in shot attempts. Uh, you know, he's done a lot of uh, distributing for us and, and he's a guy that will continue to do that. I think in general with Andrew being out, uh, as I mentioned, everyone's going to need to do a little bit more. Uh, but again, in general, I think we want to play through our bigs even more. And for, you know, for Mo, it seems like he's been sort of had these spurts where he's been really good and then he's been a little inconsistent at a time. Have you just yeah. talk to him about, I guess, that process as a freshman of going through those struggles? Or well, I, I think I might have mentioned this before. Young bigs, they struggle uh, typically in a few different areas. Number one, the pace of the game, uh, just being faster than what they're used to. Number two, the physicality. And then the third thing being guys get their hands on the basketball much more than at the high school and AAU level when you're trying to go make a play. And you've seen Mo deal with all three of those things. But I think VCU was probably his best game to date in terms of making the adjustment and dealing with that stuff. He's still a long way from being a finished product. Um, you know, what the hard thing with guys like that, guys like Jarrett, we don't get to coach the best version of them because that's, that's years out still. So what we have to do is try to get them better as fast as we can during the time that they're here, both for them and for the team. I asked Snoop about this the other day. I said, did you know that they were looking to foul you because of, because of your free throw shooting? And he's like, no. I said, yeah, they were pretty adamant. They wanted to foul Roach, you know, foul mm -hmm. Roach. And I said, uh, were you, I mean, he says, well, I know I need to be better about that. And I said, what about just overall offensively? And like there was the one play where he got the ball on the right wing and there was literally no one guarding him. And I don't know that he knew what to do. So, yeah. I mean, just what do you think of Kerwin's offensive game? Not his defense, but just offensively where he's at right now. And I think actually, Brian, he's been really good on offense. Yeah. I think obviously free throw shooting needs to get better with that. We want him to keep getting better and more consistent shooting the ball from the perimeter. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about a guy who I believe is in the top 20 players in the country with his two point shooting percentage mm -hmm. and driving. Uh, and you're also talking about a guy that he's, he's been very, very efficient with the way that he's played. Now, again, with Andrew being out of the lineup for a time, we're going to need more from him like we will with Dylan. So I think you'll see Snoop attacking, uh, making more plays, uh, 
you know, the dynamic you're talking about, and we'll see this some with Michigan, is sometimes teams just don't guard certain guys or they go under ball screens or they'll dare you to make a play from the outside and pack it in so you can't get the ball in the paint. Uh, one thing that Snoop's done, he's spent a lot of time in here shooting the ball. Uh, he's put a lot of extra time in on free throws. And it's just time for, you know, to, to, to make that pay off in the game. Uh, but I, I, I'm really pleased with Snoop overall. I think he's as improved as anyone on our team. Obviously, you know, the things he's done on the defensive end go without saying, but I think he's been really good on offense too with those two areas where we certainly want to keep getting better. With, is, uh, since Coleman's least likely to turn the ball over under pressure, I guess, did, mm -hmm. from what you know of him in his history, is he a good enough free throw shooter to get him the ball at the end of the game? So he, you know, yeah, he better be. Turn it over he, missed that, he missed that one against Duke, uh, which – you know, we're not going to dwell on the past, but uh, so he, he, he needs to, he is, but it's, again, it's a matter of, you know, being in that situation and stepping up and making them. I forget what game it was. There was a game when we were in Australia. It was a close game where he made some big ones down the stretch, but, you know, he's eight games in to his, his college career in terms of real games. So hopefully we'll have a lead in some games and, the other team will need to foul someone, and hopefully he's a guy we can get the ball to uh, where they, they can foul. I think Dylan also is somebody down the stretch you can count on to make some shots. What does Michigan do that, that makes them difficult? It seems like every year they've got an offense. It's a lot of moving, a lot of screening, yeah. a lot of shooting. Well, I think it starts with personnel. They've got five guys on the floor most of the time that can shoot three-point shots and shoot them really well. So they're going to shoot 27, 28, 33s. Uh, you got to get a hand up and contest those shots, uh, but even contesting them, they you know they can knock some of those down. So we've got to do a great job running them off the line. Uh, we've got to do a good job as well, understanding they've got some good drivers. Charles Matthews is a very good dual threat. He can go to the basket and he can also shoot the ball from outside. He's got a two to one assist to turnover ratio. Uh, Rockman is a really good player. I think he's got a nine to one assist to turnover ratio. He's a senior. He's been around for a long time. So they just have very good personnel. And when you add that to Coach Beeline's style and the way that he spreads the floor and gets guys moving the ball and screening for each other, they're tough to guard. What, what, can, what can winning a game, a close game like that, do for your like the PCU game? What can that do for your guys? Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's, you know, in a lot of ways, it's kind of the opposite of what we dealt with last year when we went to Michigan. That was our first row game. We were up one down the stretch. Uh, we actually made them miss, but then they got the rebound and, and Wagner put it in. Uh, we ended up losing by three. And I remember walking off the court and just thinking, man, that, that was one we really would have been nice to have in our pocket. Not just from an NCAA standpoint, but even more so from a standpoint of your team experiencing hanging on and winning a big game like that or coming back from being behind. So to go to VCU is a hostile atmosphere. I thought their crowd was phenomenal and just not letting them ever get out of the game and spurring them on to come back. We missed some free throws. We had a couple turnovers. Uh, they made some threes, but our guys hung in there. So to be able to draw on that and, you know, just pragmatically to, for our guys to be able to say, hey, we went on the road and won in a tough environment uh, because we'll be back in those situations uh, very soon. Does losing the way you lost to Duke and Gonzaga and then winning at VCU, is that just a young team, or not a young team necessarily, but just a team that's learning how to win? We're young too. <laughs> We've got, you know, the other day I, I, I was uh, in the VCU game, we, we blew a ball screen coverage early in the game, and it was one that involved both bigs. And so I, I jumped all over the three guys involved in it coming into the timeout, and it was Matt, and it was Jericho, and it was Mo. And I thought to myself as they were walking to Huddle Wild, it's three freshmen. So there's, a, there's probably a reason for that. But, yeah, I think uh, the Duke and the Gonzaga games, those were lessons uh, for our guys that, you know, you're playing nationally ranked teams. You're playing teams that are, uh, you know, as good as anyone in the country. And to close those games out or to win those games, you have a small margin for error and you have to make winning plays when it matters. You have to make free throws. You have to take care of the ball. Uh, those are things that you know we needed to do in the last few minutes against VCU. We did a good job down the stretch. Now there were some plays before that that allowed them to take the lead that we didn't do as good of a job with. So it's still about us putting a 40-minute effort together. Do you coach against 
that success with the PCU in the way of you know, guys feeling good about themselves, or is there a different approach to, to making sure there's the, the come down from, from the high of VCU? Well, I mean, it's been, by the time we play, we'll, we'll have been a week. Uh, so I think, you know, we put a lot, our guys put a lot of energy into uh, that trip. Uh, we got back really, really late, we put a lot of energy into that game. So they were pretty, pretty tired uh, from that. This is the end of the semester, so there's a lot of academic demands on their time. So our guys have done a good job balancing those things. We've really tried to focus on growth and, and just letting the guys know we've got to grow and be better than we were last time out both individually in the areas we've talked about, free throw shooting, outside shooting, uh, taking care of the ball, making the right plays on the defensive end, and as a team. And for Michigan, uh, they represent, uh, you know, a jump in competition. Uh, they're, at, you know, as good of a team uh, as we've seen since, since we got back from Portland. And offensively, they're every, every bit as good as those teams. And, uh, you know, they're, they're very good on defense, too, this year. They've... Uh, I think really made some adjustments to their defense that have made them uh, really sticky on that end. So we got a work cut out for us, and particularly being a man down, we're really going to have to come together and do what goes into winning. Three, four last ones. At times we've seen the good Eric, and at times we've seen him kind of you know, struggle yeah. in some games. Could this be something that, that sparks him when it's like you know his teammates kind of look at him and say, hey, you know, with, with Andrew down, we need some guys to step up? I, I hope so. I mean, one of the things that we've seen in him is uh, a real sharp focus in practice uh, over these past several days. Uh, not that he didn't have that before, but he, he's, he's really been locked in. I think he understands that uh, he's, you know, of, of all the guys just positionally with a guy like Andrew being taken out of the lineup, he, he's a big key. And he doesn't have to score 20 points or – you know, lead us in everything. But he just, as I've told him, he needs to play with a hard edge. Uh, he needs to play with a real aggressiveness about him. If he makes a mistake, make an aggressive mistake. Always be ready. Uh, and if he can do those things, I think he's a very good player and a talented player. So I think he's going to be able to contribute to our team. You obviously game plan for Michigan ball screen stuff last year when so much of it went through the one with Walton still there. But, yep. you know, now it's it's a lot different with they have three different point guards and so much goes through Matthews. I mean, just what is it? What are the challenges that, that their ball screen stuff presents this year? Yeah, they're doing actually more ball screen stuff, I would say, even than they did last year when in Walton, uh, you know, was a really, really good player. And I guess the, the NBA recognized that too. Um, you know, I think the key with Michigan is making sure that we, we don't get a step behind, you know, whether it's ball screens or whether it's screening action off the ball. Because when you get a step behind guarding anything that they're doing, they really make you pay. And they make the next pass, and you might rotate to that guy, but then they're going to make the pass after that. And pretty much whoever they're flinging it to can shoot the ball. Uh, as you mentioned, they have more diversity now coming off a of pick and roll than maybe they had when it was mostly Walton last year. Matthews is a terrific player, and he's a guy that, that we're going to need to do a good job trying to keep him out of the lane. But he was two for three from three against UCLA as well, and he got to the foul line at will. So we're going to need to do a great job on him. And what did you think scouting the last two games? They got a little Jekyll and Hyde thing going on just half by half. Well, I mean, that's a lot of teams early in the year. I, I thought, first of all, watching that UCLA game, I, I, I thought for them to beat that UCLA team, that team that is a talented team that they beat. Uh, and for them to come together when they were behind, uh, they made some huge plays to claw back. And what you saw was some of their young guys uh, making plays and, and stepping up and, and kind of growing up, uh, you know, even during the game, which is, you know, scary as an opponent, but, you know, as a coach, that's what you want to see in your team. So, uh, you know, I, I think they're making strides and growth as a team, which is, as a coach, that's what you want this time of year. How anxious are you for a Star Wars theme night tomorrow, coach? And, uh, I, got a, I got a tweet, Dickie B tweeted me, he says uh, he's going to be in the house and can't wait to see you and the guys. Yeah, we're looking forward to, to Dickie V being there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and he's only going to add to the level of excitement. You know, we're hopeful that it's going to be a great crowd and, and a great atmosphere for our guys. Uh, you know, in terms of Star Wars, you know, I'm, I'm expecting all of you guys to be dressed up as your <laughs> favorite Star Wars uh, character. But, um, and, you know, anything that adds to the energy, the excitement, the passion for what we're doing, 
uh, is exciting, and, and our guys are, are looking forward to the opportunity. Last force be with you, Coach. You too. <laughs>